you are driven, motivated, and are interested in not just results, but massive results. I'm Mark Allen Granger with Granger Leadership Institute, founder of the Innovative Leadership Network, and I'd like to welcome you to this video, The Acceleration of Productivity, Progress, and Results. The promise of this video is a deeper understanding of the inner workings of what makes us human, as well as some specific tools and techniques that create a sense of acceleration in your life. You'll be more productive, make better progress, and get better results. Let's talk about results for a moment. For the last 19 years, I have had been fascinated with the study of personal transformation and how to create the results we all want in our lives. What specific results do you want in your life? How about your career? What are the areas in your life that you're really looking for results? Personally, the only kind of results that I'm interested in are massive results, and that is in all areas of life. I think for the first time in history, we're given an opportunity to really be able to get results in all facets of our life. Technology has allowed us to be able to touch people globally. It allows us to do several things to where we, sh where we have an ambition to really make the things we want to have happen in our lives. It's likely that you are very driven and know how to achieve your material goals. But how's your relationship with your spouse or with yourself? Massive results does not necessarily equal achievement. Massive results equals fulfillment. Massive results requires massive and ongoing personal transformation. Think about it for a minute. When it comes down to getting fulfillment in your life, to be able to achieve what you want to achieve, it's a combination of a couple of things. It's about being able to go out and get what you want while at the same time being able to get real clear on the things that are really important to you and making sure that you're spending time on them. The results you have in your life now basically correspond to who you are right now. In order to get massive results, it means that you're going to have to make massive change. And so it requires us to be able to get good at transforming ourselves. Massive results also requires belonging to a tribe that adheres to a higher set of standards. Think a little bit about that and the people that you belong to and the tribes and the communities that you belong to in your life. You step up to those tribes that you belong to. And this is an opportunity when you want to get real results to belong to people who also are striving to get results in their life, trying to make some things happen for themselves. Massive result also requires massive failure. Now this is kind of interesting. We're talking about the, the deep underpinnings of what it means to be human and the, the inner workings of our minds and our emotions. We have been conditioned to fail. From the very young age, we've been conditioned that failure is a bad thing and that we don't want to be, we don't want to have failure. But yet what we don't recognize is that massive success is only the result of massive failure. We don't see the hand, the torn hands of the, the champion baseball player. We don't see the, the agony of defeat that they've had from being struck, from striking out. We don't see the young ballerinas whose feet are bloody and sore from working hard and failing. We don't see that part of success. So what happens is once you start to really get focused on, uh, on accomplishing something in your life and really focused on your goals, we get hit with the idea that we have to fail a lot before we're going to be able to make the distinctions that allow us to succeed. So remember, massive success requires massive failure. And we've been conditioned to take that personally. When we fail to achieve something, it means that you yourself are a failure. It's the way we frame it in our mind. And that's just not the way it is. Now, see, we know this intellectually. Intellectually, we understand that things occur in our mind and that, no, I'm not really a failure. What I'm trying to accomplish is a failure. But what happens is in our hearts, after going out there day in and day out, striving to become our best, falling short of expectation, making mistakes, that starts to grind on our, grind on our motivation, and eventually it wears thin on us. So we also must create a relationship with failure to understand what failure is really about and understand how to maneuver through it so that we can accelerate the progress, the productivity, and the results in our lives. To get massive results, we need to be productive. We need to feel like we're, getting a, we're accomplishing something. And we know we're productive when we recognize progress. So here are some of the ways you may be holding yourself back from being more productive. You've created a plan to achieve your goals, but you're so concerned with details that you fail at sticking to your plan. This is something I used to do all the time. I'd get so, I was so, it was so important to me to get results and to do a good job that I would over plan and over analyze and then get stuck with analysis paralysis. So you want to make sure that you're getting progress, not perfection. 
you get caught up in the trap of striving for excellence. So what we want to do is avoid trying to do everything perfect and do it right and instead get it done, get progress. Now we have been conditioned also to multitask. Multitasking in a lot of ways is considered, ooh, you're really, you're kind of, you've got a nice gift if you can multitask. But in reality, overachievers and great achievers understand the power of focus and they avoid multitasking at all costs. They may actually carve out times in their day where they're going to multitask, but we want to get to the point where we, avoid where we can avoid multitasking, where we're focusing on the things that are important to us and our priorities to get things done. So multitasking often leads to us being unproductive as opposed to being productive. You also, one thing that might keep holding you back from productivity is that you want to help others. You're very altruistic. You want to be there to help others and support others. And you're saying yes way too much. Great achievers, people that are really productive, understand the power of saying no and making smart choices on the things they're going to engage their passion in. You also might be experiencing a little bit of overwhelm because of all the demands upon your time. Technology has been a great gift to us, but in some ways it's a double-edged sword. What it's done is it's really created a, a dichotomy for us to where now that we have these tools to speed things up, we actually are choosing to do way too much. And we have all these demands upon our time, which really, really kind of suck our ability to be able to be productive. Now, some of you deep down may very much resent yourself for not being more organized, focused, and driven. And working with hundreds of professionals that I've had over the years, all of them, when it gets into that inner game of wanting to, to be and do more and, and perfect, our, perfect ourselves and be the best that we can be, everybody always kind of wishes they were more organized, focused, and driven. And they feel that if they were more organized, focused, and driven, that they'd be able to achieve their goals and be more productive. Now, that's, that's kind of true to a degree, but really what it comes down to is being able to slow down. You need to be good to yourself. Be in the moment so that you can try to focus on what you did accomplish instead of the things you didn't accomplish and be able to make sure that you execute things that you feel are good enough. Now, you may understand this intellectually, but on an emotional level, we may not have been able to take the lessons that we've learned and put them into action. When it comes to breaking this cycle, there are some things we can do. And for those of you interested in massive results, this is a cycle you must break. Understand that it's less about having more self-discipline, drive, and focus. Sure, those things have their place. It's also less about identifying and changing your conditioned responses. That too is important. It's more about simply noticing your attachments and the internal chaos it creates within you. Clearing the mental real estate so that you, the real you is available for the more important aspects of your life is the critical element here. So you want to get clear at what it means to clear the mental real estate. We get so caught up in things that we often forget our real priorities. So here are some strategies that you can implement immediately to gain some control over this vital area of our lives that seem to have so much power over us. Get congruent. Abraham Lincoln said, if I had six hours to cut down a tree, I would spend four hours sharpening my saw. This is a critical distinction to make. Taking 30 to 45 minutes every morning before you start your work and simply brain dump. So you want to take some time to go ahead and just brain dump. Get everything, all your worries, concerns, and things you have to do out on a piece of paper. There's something very magical about being able to take something and the process of writing and getting it down on paper. It really helps us release it from our brain, release it from our physiology. So what I'd like you to do is take about 15 minutes right now. Go ahead and hit pause on this and pull out a piece of paper and for, for about 10 or 15 minutes, just write as fast as you can, nonstop. Just get a, a stream of consciousness where everything that's in their brain, all your worries, concerns, responsibilities, priorities, you just get them written down, all the things you have to do. Get them written down on one big piece of paper, maybe two, and then come on back and hit play and we'll go from there.